the story so far. The year is 1909. Marshal John Malcolm has been appointed by Ranger Lindsay Kurtz to hunt down the fearsome Mexican outlaw, Leon Cabraz. John has recruited rancher and former sharpshooter Catherine Angle and Taylor's assistant Morwenna Abrams to fight by his side. Good. Now, on to the next one. Hold it steady. Squeeze the trigger. And... Very good. You've taken that tin can's ear off. That's a skill if you can keep it up. I have fired ten shots and hit two targets. I don't think any bandits will be willing to stand quite so still. We've all got to start somewhere. And like I said, you're already better than most in this line of work. Reload. Go again. Shall I reset the cans first? You've killed two of them. And I have to take out the rest of their friends. How'd you do? What you two up to? Shooting practice. Uh, Miss Abrams, this is Catherine Engel. Miss Engel, Morwen Abrams. The three of us make up the team so far. Pleasure to meet you, Morwenna. Are you a bit rusty with your shooting? I'm new to it. This is the first time I've so much as held a gun. Be careful with holding it like that. The recoil will hurt your shoulder. She's a first-time shooter. Long story, but she's willing to learn. She was an assistant at the tailor's. He volunteered her as a tracker, thinking she was naturally inclined to it. Which isn't the case, of course. Well, I'm sure you had your reasons for agreeing to it. Mind if I have a go, Moana? Not at all. Just those tin cans? Easy. How about those bottles over there? Those are further than those cans. Now, is someone going to throw me a can in the air, or would that be just showing off? How many hours did you spend learning to do that? Mm, my father taught me when he got me my own rifle when I was seven. Then I traveled around with the fair showing off. So, quite a few hours, I would say. Time I don't have, unless you happen to have H.G. Wells' time machine hidden away somewhere. So long as you know how to use a rifle, that's all that matters. Marshal! Ranger Kurtz has summoned you to the sheriff's office. He has? What am I, his damn servant? <sighs> so when did you get here? Of course I moved out here after the Civil War. Worked on the family's plantation since they were now short on workers. Marshal Malcolm here to see you, Ranger Kurtz. Oh, very good, son. On your way. Glad you could make it, John. How's the recruitment going? What can I do for you? Oh, such manners. I'd like to introduce you to the two newest members of our team, Drew Morrill and Walden MacDonald. Why are they locked in a cell? The two of them had a bit of an altercation at the saloon last night. You're making me work with criminals? I thought I'd just make you feel at home, John. You used to keep people like this in your company all the time. Twenty damn years ago I did, but that's changed now. I was referring to your time as a sheriff in Laredo, John. Oh, did you think I meant that time you rang with the Harlan gang? <laughs> I'm sorry for the confusion. In any case, that only makes you even more qualified to deal with these two. Morrow, McDonald, wake up. Yeah, oh, I was having a nice dream then. Dream time's over. On your feet. John looked the two men over as they got to their feet. Morrow was the biggest man John had ever seen. His head was devoid of hair, but he had a bushy ginger mustache. The other man, McDonald was slim but tall, older, rougher, blonde and balding, with scraggly sideburns and dirty clothes. Drew here is a hunter and tracker from up north. While I had heard you and just recruited your own, I think two trackers should speed up the process. Uh, any help is appreciated, but I'm the best that there ever was. Rabbits, deers, wolves, bears. I've shot them all. I've been up in Canada trapping moose the last few years. Well, that's big talk, Mr. Morrill. Those moose traps must be even bigger. I'm getting the impression this man doesn't believe my claims, Kurtz. Marshal Malcolm's a hard man to please, Mr. Morrell. I wouldn't take it personally. On the other end, Mr. MacDonald is a bounty hunter. Mm, where are we going then, Mexico? I ain't fond of that place. It's got the same problems as here. Too many Yankees, am I right? <laughs> uh, Mr. MacDonald exists somewhere on the outlaw spectrum himself, so we believe he might bring a valuable insight into your quarry. 
In the last six months since these two met, they've committed a list of crimes longer than my arm. We feel this assignment will do them good to set them on the right path. Can I talk to you a minute? Come this way. What are you playing at, Kurtz? What do you mean, John? If Moral is an outdoorsman, I'll eat my hat. Have you seen the size of him? There's not even a horse big enough to carry him. MacDonald has blood round his mouth, and I'm not even sure it's his. I don't suppose you've got cannibalism on that list of yours. Hmm. They may be a bit rough around the edges, true. They do meet the requirements for this task. To do their bit to make this country the best it can be. The requirements for this task? You've been talking about this Leon Cabris, the devil incarnate or something to that effect. And I'm being sent out there with a tailor and those two fools... I are you trying to get us killed? Is there a problem, John? That's it, isn't it? This isn't about taking out some outlaw. It's a spring clean. You're trying to get rid of us, of them, by sending us up against impossible odds. And if Leon Cabris dies, that's just a bonus, isn't it? He really is crazy, isn't he? Criminals fighting criminals. More natives. Old scores to settle. That's what this is, isn't it? Maybe it is. Did you really think the infamous Malcolm Carver, outlaw extraordinaire, could just change his name and switch sides as if it made a difference for what you've done? Huh, you're a relic of a bygone age. Kurtz. Very well. Even if it was the case, which it may not be, it is your duty as a lawman, John, to do your part to uphold it. Is that understood? Call it what you like, Kurtz. I know what it is. And the same to you, John, if it helps you sleep at night. John Storm from the sheriff's office, stumbling into a young black man in the road. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, same. Don't mention it. Oh, hey, Marshal. I was just coming to see you. You were? I'm Albert, sir. Albert Little. I work on the railroad. I used to be a farm hand at Engel's Ranch a few years ago. I heard you and Miss Engel were heading up a bounty hunt down into Mexico. I've always wanted to go, and I thought I'd come see you. See if you'd consider me. I can ride well, and I'm pretty good with a lasso and a six-shooter. I know it would be tough work. I've had a few run-ins over the years, of course. And if what I'm hearing about this guy you're going after is true, well, what I've dealt with is nothing. Mr. Little, if you feel strongly enough about this, you're welcome to come. But my advice would be to turn around and go back to your job. There's nothing against you here at all, but I'm trying to save your life. The bad guys here are the ones giving the orders. Not the guy we're hunting. Trust me. That night, John, Catherine, and Morwenna met in the hotel room to discuss John's revelation. Do you really think Kurtz would organize all this just to kill you? I do. He's wanted me dead since 1890. This is just his next plan. And those two in the cell, MacDonald and Morrill, their only real use is cannon fodder. Saves money keeping them locked up. As for Morwenna and this new boy Albert, Kurtz wouldn't mind at all if they were taken out. But why Catherine? Uh... John chose me personally to watch his back. I wasn't a sign, but still, um, I'm no friend of John's. In Kurt's eyes, I would just be a bonus. Is there any way you can stop this? I could. I know some things about Kurt's he'd want to keep buried, but he'd as soon as have us all killed before I have the chance to open my mouth. We're better off gritting our teeth and bearing it. And I promise you both, I'll do my best to lead you and keep you safe. So now you're keeping me safe? Keeping you safe? Well, someone has to. Get some rest. We're to meet Kurtz and the rest of our team at 8 in Laredo. The next morning came. John readied his gun belt and horse and met Catherine and Morwenna outside, both armed and dressed for action. The trio saddled up and rode south into Laredo, meeting Kurtz, Robertson, and their new allies Walden and Drew at the bridge crossing in Rio Grande. Morning, John. Sleep well? I certainly did. Now I know what I'm walking into. I thought you would. Miss Engel, it's been a long time. Hope you made arrangements to make sure your ranch is kept safe where you're away. It'll be safe until I return. And I will be returning, Mr. Kurtz. I should hope so. And Miss Abrams, nice to meet you. Mr. Morrill, Mr. MacDonald, if you may join them, please. My, we really are a traveling freak show, aren't we all? Speak for yourself, Walden. Marshal, soon you shall see my claims are true. Doubtful. Way 
From down the street, Albert Little came riding, pulling up next to John. Glad to see I could make it. Rode as fast as I could. So you didn't take my advice? I hope you're as good with that gun as Marl here says he is at hunting. I figured the risk was worth it. Albert Little? I thought it was you. Good to see you. And you, Miss Engel. Time to see your sharpshooting put to good use. Is that everyone? Hold on. Here comes our leader now. Excuse me? From down the bridge, two men approached on horseback, side by side. Mexican lawmen. One of them rode ahead and disembarked smoothly. Tall, handsome with flowing hair. He approached John with an outstretched hand. Marshal Malcolm, a pleasure to meet you all. I am Javier Salvador. I've heard much about you. Mr. Salvador is a celebrated lawman south of the river. The best, so I'm told. Captain Salamanca here has personally chosen him to lead this team. Javier Salvador is the best man we have to offer. His only flaw is that he makes us all look bad. <laughs> Not that I mean to. I do what I can, because I must. Your first stop when you travel into Mexico will be a town called Prima Panto. It's a day's ride southwest. There we'll wire you your first instructions. Kurtz, I thought you said I was leading this. I must have been mistaken. Do you know much about the Mexican landscape? I thought not. Salvador's an expert in such matters, eh? We wouldn't want you all to get lost and die in the desert, now would we? I'm sure that would suit you just fine. Hello there, ladies. Howdy. If I could get everyone's attention, if we could all form a line in front of the bridge so we may take a photograph before you set off. Come on, everyone, into position. John, you stand next to me. Well then. I was thinking maybe you stand to the left? <laughs> only joking, only joking. You stand where you want. You know why they're taking these photographs? So they can identify the bodies later on. <laughs> you are a charming individual, aren't you? On the count of three. One, two, three. And so the team finally set off on their adventure, across the Rio Grande into Mexico, to hunt down and end the reign of vicious outlaw Leo Cabras. Tune in next time to hear the next installment of The Lion Goats.